And now for the part you've really been waiting for, which is how do we put this thing back in? How do we reduce this dislocated shoulder? Now, I used to work in Telluride, and uh, we'd have residents come from all over the country. They wanted to see pulmonary edema, and they wanted to see dislocated shoulders. So I would often be busy. The resident would be working on the patient, and I would say, how you doing? And I'd come back in, no luck. And oftentimes it's because the patient was looking at the resident like they were A, scared, and B, hated the resident's guts. This is what a patient looks like when they hate your guts. They suck their shoulder in, and no matter what technique you use, and there are a whole bunch of techniques, whenever you start doing this, you're not gonna get the shoulder in. The way you get any shoulder in, I'll show you my favorite technique, but there are a million of them, but the way you get a shoulder in is by getting the patient to relax and give you their shoulder. So the way that I try to get a patient to relax is by using something I call verbal anesthesia. And I literally tell the patient that I'm going to reduce their shoulder, that I know what I'm doing. You can lie a little bit if you have to. And uh, I've done this a million times. But most of all, I try to get the patient to relax. Because if they've seen too many Mel Gibson movies or cowboy movies, they think you're going to come up to them and go, hi, I want you to <laughs> And uh, so you have to convince them that everything you're going to do is going to be nice and controlled and you're using the verbal anesthesia and you're touching them with confidence and now no matter what technique you use often the shoulders are going to go in. The technique I really like to use is a technique called the snowbird technique. It originated in Snowbird, Utah and it goes something like this. So I'm going to use a strap to pull down on Denise's arm to create traction towards the floor, to distract. Now, I've talked to a lot of orthopedic surgeons that say, well, it, this is a fine technique, but you really don't need the straps. The reason I like the straps are because if we use just muscle to push down and we're a little nervous, we're often doing this sort of like, don't worry, I'll get you in. Whereas when you can just step on the strap and provide traction with your foot, it just makes this go very smoothly. So let's put it on. Normally I would just use one strap, but I'm standing downhill, so I'm going to use two straps just so I'm not out of balance. I'm going to slide it over the patient's arm, just like this. And normally I would pad this, but Denise has a couple layers on, so I think we're good. And then I'm simply going to stick my foot into the strap and use my body weight to push down. I'm keeping Denise from leaning towards me by pushing her away here, or if I was standing up, I could support her like this. You could also have another operator on the opposite side providing counter traction. This technique involves traction towards the floor and ultimately some external rotation. So all I'm doing is I'm pushing towards the floor with my foot and the question is how much and I would say just enough. But it's quite a bit of pressure towards the floor pulling her humerus down towards the ground, and then at some point, a little external rotation, and typically, she goes back in. To recap, I simply put some kind of strap on. This can be whatever you've got. You want to pat it nicely, so we're not putting undue pressure on her arm. And we're just going to slide our foot in to whatever strap we've set up, and push down towards the ground. After applying that traction, we're going to externally rotate and typically she'll go in. As long as she's relaxed and she's given us her shoulder, she'll go in. If she hates me and sucks her shoulder away, then you get into this kind of thing and it's not going to go in. After you get the shoulder in, there, there are a few things I'd like to look at before I go ahead and splint her. The first thing is I'll redo my distal neurovascular exam. Can you feel this? Mm -hmm. Move all your fingers. Pulse okay? Yeah, got a good pulse. And can you feel me when I do this? Mm -hmm. So she's intact, that's good news. And I can document that. The next thing I wanna do is get her into a sling position. And interestingly, earlier she couldn't do this. She couldn't touch her shoulder, but now she can. I'll look at her anatomy and her normal deltoid contour has returned. And she's now able to go into sling position. 